What is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? The old coot here coming at you with a saddlebag review. Some people call these Roswheel, Arc CNCL, whatever. There's an actual name on the tag, which I'm going to show you in a second, but I just want to kind of show you what it looks like on a Area 13 Saber. Very similar to the Foxbat. The Foxbat just has that uh, top tube. This one just has more of like a insert. Anyways. Saddle bags, cargo bags is what I'm calling this. So if you check down below in the description section, right, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but a link to these will be down there below in that description section. Also in the comments section, wherever that is, look for cargo bags is the link. That's what I'm calling them. Okay. So anyways, basically I wanted to show everybody what they kind of look like when they're semi, semi or half stuffed. This is basically the back view right? I've got pillows in both of them to simulate some camping gear. There's room here. I mean, there's plenty of room. I don't know. I saw some other videos where people were complaining or some notes where people were complaining that this was rubbing on it. I don't see how that's possible. I mean, you really would have to like screw this up or depending on the geometry of your frames for your cargo rack. But anyways, there is plenty of room here. There's at least, there's at least like three or four inches of space here. These do have a hard plastic insert in them, which keeps the structure, right? So the structurally sound here. So if you wanna go nuts and go the extra mile foam core, you ever hear a foam core or just cardboard? You could always shove another piece of cardboard down into the bag, you know, cut to size to give it a little more strength if you're worried about this curving and bending and touching or whatever. Okay, another complaint that came up was that your foot hits the saddle bag, right? Or the cargo bag. How is that possible? I mean, <laughs> there's, there's at least like 10 inches here as distance between where the back of your foot would be, you know, pedaling around, around, around in a circle. I don't see how you could possibly touch anything. This is at least on a Area 13 Sabre. So just keep that in mind. Uh, by the way, I did do the video on the Connect suspension post and also the cloud nine seats. So make sure to check out those videos. If you go through my playlist, e-bike, e-bike, everything, e-bike tech, I can't remember what it's called, but anyways, go back in the video playlist and you'll see all that. So anyways, with that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to show you all with some tape measure, you know, show you all some measurements and all that good stuff. Here's like another angle from this side. If you're curious about that, you know, take a screenshot, freeze the video, whatever. Here's another one. There you go. Let's take a look from back here just so you can kind of see what's going on, right? So there you go. And then let me come this way. So we can get another shot. There you go. So that's that's basically what the bags look like on a bike. If you want to take another shot of that, there you go. And then here's like a corner. We call this the three quarter ass shot in the movie industry, right? When you're doing car commercials. And then here's your big booty shot right there. I'm, kind of, I'm tilting the camera on purpose so that you can actually see what's going on right there. There you go. So there you go. Okay, so then this is basically just the same thing on the other side. So let's take some just preliminary measurements, right? And these are ballpark, remember, because these are half stuffed right now with just a couple pillows. But basically your, your top left to right, this is just ballparking it. You're somewhere around two feet. Right, so you can see right there, 24 inches, two feet left to right. If you wanna kinda just guesstimate how wide you're gonna be as you're traveling down the road. Okay, bottom to top. Well, the top is adjustable. So, you know, there's some room there for interpretation of like, you know, how high you want these bags to go. Everything is adjustable, we'll get into that in a second. But let's just say from like this point, right, which is down there, to about the top of where I have the bags right now, you're looking at like 15, 16 inches. And like I said, these are adjustable. They do sandwich down a little more. Let's say you lose two or three inches, you'd be at like 12 inches, give or take. And that's, like I said, that's just loosely packed. So yeah, somewhere around 12 inches would be like the core part of the bag. Okay, how wide is the bag? Let me see if I can adjust my tape measure here real quick. Make it a little easier. Okay, so, at the, at the bottom, remember, it's gonna be a little bit wider than this. So you're looking at like seven inches. Sorry for the tape measure being upside down, but that's the way it is because I'm holding it in my left hand. Anyways, you're looking at somewhere between seven and eight inches of width towards the bottom, right? Give or take. And then towards the, towards the top of like what you're hanging, you know, your normal, I guess, height would be, 
You're looking at around eight inches. So let's just say it's like a cylinder, like a rectangular box going straight down. It would be somewhere in the ballpark of around eight inches down there and around eight inches up here. Okay, now let's look at the front to back membership, mem or sorry, measurement. If you want to go that way, you're looking at around 14 inches, right? Give or take, almost close to like 15 inches. 14, if you're conservative, you know, you got to remember these, these aren't hard cargo bags, right? They're like soft canvas-like material. So as you stuff more, more of your junk into here, you might get a bulge, which will then shrink the sides. You know, do the math. You'll kind of figure it out of where you're at. So anyways... Let's look at the, if I, put, if I take the pillow off, that was just to represent, you know, you have two straps that go over that you can put like a bedroll or a sleeping bag or some kind of compression sack or whatever. Here is what I found is the name of the actual company, Sahu, right? So if they're using Ross Wheel on Amazon, it's probably like a distributor that's kind of using their name. Here's the tags. There's your barcode. You know, in case you're curious about that, some of you I know are really nitpicky about these fine details. There's your website, sahu.cc. I think CC stands for Clear Channel or it might be China. I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily want to click on that link. <laughs> but there you go. Ride Support Bicycle Bags. That's what they're calling them. There's your model number, Made in China, Bicycle Rear Panier Bag 2-in-1. You get the idea. These are attached. They're sewn together, so you cannot undo one bag from the other or whatever. Basically... Uh, let's talk about some adjustments. So they do get, if I take my tape measure away, wait, okay. They do get pretty tall, right? So you could be, you could be pretty tall on these if you wanted to. Let me step back for another second. I'll take another measurement here in a second, but see how tall these bags can go. If you wanted to just stay at the bare minimum of like folding this over and then We'll talk about the fine details in a second, but I've got some black pillow or a black pillow in there to kind of just hold its shape or whatever. But let me take a measurement from the bottom, bottom, all the way to the top, in case you guys are curious about that. Need to pull out some, some more tape. Okay, so here we go. So here's just a rough ballpark of the bottom to the top. You're looking at around two feet. So there you go. So you've got around two feet from the bottom to the top. That's a rough, rough estimate. Please don't like set that in stone. You know, again, it depends how this is closed. If it's latched down all the way, what the store, you know, you get the idea. But anyways, what you've got up here to secure your cargo in there is basically this flap comes over. There's Velcro here. See the Velcro right there? See the Velcro right here? So this flap comes over. And then on this side, you've got... Uh, this is female hook and loop Velcro, right? This is male hook and loop. So as you come over, so if I can do this with one hand, basically you're going to, you're going to seal the seam at these two points. And then now this part, you, you basically fold over to then, let's do it on this side. On this side, move this out of the way. I got too much stuff in the way. Okay. So as you come down, I'm showing you all that I can do this actually with one hand. So basically, as you fold your flap over to keep whatever you want in there, now this whole part folds down. And where it folds down is completely up to how much you stuff this bag, right? So once you folded this down, so you have, now you have two more points of contact that are holding this, but then, aha, you also get a buckle that is fully adjustable. So you're sitting there going like, oh my God, I'm gonna ride the excess like material, the excess webbing is gonna go into my tire, I'm gonna be screwed. No, you're not. This is all, this is the end of the end of the extra webbing. So it's all it's all held together here nice and tight. If you wanna take a look at the stitching, you do have double stitching right there, which is kind of nice. These buckles do feel like, you know, a decent plastic. Like I wouldn't say, you know, the best ABS plastic that I've ever seen in my entire life, but they definitely feel like they're solid. You know, these are cheap pannier bags, right? Cheap cargo bags. They're going to last maybe, you know, as long as you take care of them. Let's just leave it at that. The more you abuse them, the, obviously the, the more they're going to fall apart. If you want to spend $500 for cargo bags, be my guest, but I could buy 10 pair of these bags, wear them out before I, you know, 
decide, okay, I'm going to spend $500 on another pair of cargo bags. And you may use them, you may not use them. You might buy them for a season and then let them sit in your, on your bike and your bike might sit in your garage for three years. So it's like, do you want to spend all that upfront money, right, to buy a $500 pair of cargo bags and just they're just going to be sitting around? Or would you rather buy something like this that's kind of like inexpensive, budget-friendly that you can toss around, you can beat up, you can do whatever. You know, if you happen to get a hole-in-one or whatever, hole-in-one, isn't it better to destroy one of these and then buy a second pair for around like 40, 50 bucks or so, give or take, maybe even less when it's on sale? Just saying, just giving you some options there. Okay, so this buckle would then go into there's a top buckle that comes down so these two come together right i can't do this with one hand but basically those two would click together and then you would basically oh, maybe i can do it with one hand let's see let's try that's what she said okay so then basically once you get that in there anyways once you get that in there you get the idea it's going to click and then you've got your click and then to release the buckle basically you would you would squeeze these two sides which are basically like these two sides here right? Very, I'd say decent ABS plastic. It's not cheap. It's definitely not cheap, but the plastic is like a good quality, if that's what you want to call it, quote unquote. Anyways, you do have uh, your double stitching right there. As mentioned, you've got that, the Velcro, the hook and loop seems like it's good quality stuff. The material itself, the canvas is, you know, I think, I think what I got was like the OD green or whatever. They may or may not have a different color. There's your logo. It just all depends on the links that you click. Sometimes you click on a link and one's like a dollar more than the other one. Sometimes you click on a link and like, you know, it's a totally different company name. But basically this is the basic, you know, structure of what the bag is. Anyways, you get the idea. Okay, then back here. There's your, you know, stitching. This could have used some touch-up work. You know, obviously, I mean, this is something that I noticed now, like in other reviews, people were mentioning this, was that, you know, some of this might seem like flimsy material or cheap material. You know, how long it's going to last, you know, eh. <laughs> like I said, you can buy 10 of these and go through all 10 before you have to purchase one that's like, you know, $500 or whatever. You do have a little loop here with some reflective material. I wish I could show you that some way. I don't think I can, there you go. You kind of get a little bit of it. But basically this reflects like when lights hit it at nighttime. So at least you got a little more visibility. So you got that. This is all Velcro, right? Velcro, Velcro. There's another little, let me come on this side. You have another, you have another two reflective stripes right that are in the back. So obviously if a car is coming behind you, I try not to ride at night. That's just my rule. I just don't want to be, you know, a, a number or a victim or a statistic. <laughs> I, do, I try to do most of my riding during the day. You also have some side, right? Reflective material down here. So if a car's coming at you 180 degrees parallel or whatever, at least they can see you or see you a little bit better, you know, whatever, take that, whatever with a grain of salt. But you do have a nice little pouch back here. You know, this is give or take around, I would say around eight inches or so, something like that by, you know, whatever. It was like eight inches wide. Maybe it's a little bit taller, like 10 inches. Let's say like 10 inches tall by around eight inches wide. And then it's like, it's a little, it, it tapers, right? So it tapers down to like a triangle point down here. I'd say maybe at the highest part up here, it's maybe two inches wide, you know, give or take. That Velcro's mirrored on the same side. Obviously you get that idea. Let's take a look at these buckles. So the way this all attaches to your bike is you put the bags on top of your cargo bag. There are two buckles back here that are fully adjustable, right? These are like your clicking, clicking positions or whatever. Those click in, you get a nice solid click. That's to hold the back end, cinch it up, tighten it. Then in the front, you have only one. This is kind of odd to me. I wish they would have given like two of these. Maybe there are, no, there's only one. So basically it's a loop that I basically wrapped around the front part of the rack. I wish it was these two like mirrored over here and then you could adjust like one side or the other, whatever. But I guess this is how this company, Sahu, Sahu. I wish this is how this company would have done it was to mirror this over here so you had two, but instead you just get one. So you understand what I'm talking about? So basically you unclick this wrapped around, right? And then I just basically kept looping and pulling and looping and pulling through. And then basically that's how it goes. Uh, you do not have any kind of way of attaching this to this for any excess slack. That's why I just coiled it around and around and around until basically, you know, I could get it to a point where I knew that this wouldn't interfere with the wheel or whatever. Okay, sides. How do we do the sides? So to do the sides, basically, if you check this out, I'm lifting the bag, right? And this is how you attach 
So there's a huge piece of Velcro here, right, that's adjustable. You can kind of open it, close it however you want to. And I'll show you on, oh, look through the magic of TV. There's, there's our mirrored version. And let me see if I can get the, the light on real quick. There we go. So basically what I did was, is I went around, see if you notice my cargo rack has one, two, three down tubes, whatever they're called, right? What I did was, was I went around the first one. I came back over this one and then went around the second one and then connected the two together with the Velcro. So that's basically what's going on right there, if you can see, right? So around, around the first tube, then over the other one and then around the other one back there. It's kind of hard to see. But anyways, that's basically how, how it's secured down below. I guess what they're counting on or what they're hoping for is that gravity is going to do its thing and gravity is going to keep your bags down. The only problem is, you know, if you are going to go over like some serious bumps, right, speed humps, that kind of stuff, your bags might do one of these, you know, and, and bounce up and down. That's the nature of the beast. You know, what you can do if you really want to go nuts is see this strap, the one that holds the bag down, right, or Y strap. See that strap? What you could do if you had all the time in the world and you knew you were going to go like on a nice long back bike packing trip or whatever, what you could do is just take this strap because this is loose, come down the tube, come down this and come back up again. Not everybody's bike racks are the same. You know, thank goodness for Area 13 for including a good <laughs> bike rack on their bikes that has all of these options, right, to mount and et cetera. So you have three this way and three this way. What I would do if it was me was I, I would do the whole under and over thing again. I would probably, from this point, right, from this point here, I'd probably go like, like over this way, go under this way, and then go over this way to come back up and then link up with the Velcro. But as I mentioned, there is like a piece of plastic in here that's sewn in, right? A hard piece of plastic. The piece of plastic goes up to here, right? Which on your bag would be just to like the bottom part. Oh, there we go. Now you can actually see the reflective material. So that's here. So reflect, lights off, lights on. There you go. Wax off, <laughs> wax on. You get the idea. But that's how I would do it. You know, you've got enough room here to push these through if you wanted to do that. You know, most of my bike packing is usually on cement roads and like I'm, it's pretty level terrain. I'm not going to do any crazy like off-roading or anything. So I don't have to worry about the hop up and down, right? It's going to happen. You know, I'm willing to deal with it. But if I really wanted to do it the right way and I had all the time in the world, that's what I would do is I would feed this back through, go through, you know, go like I said, go over, under, over, you know, and then come back up and then reconnect, uh, reconnect this. So reconnect, reconnect these from the sides. You know, if you want to reach in there with your hands and do whatever, and then come back up and then reconnect this with this top Y strap. This does not adjust. This is like sewn in. This is how it is. It's the bottom part that does adjust. So how much room, how much stuff can you actually fit in here? You know, right now I've got, I'd say I've got, what is this? Like a, almost a full, oh, and the, and this is another good thing too, is these little Velcro straps on the sides. So between, so you can have it open all the way or you can cinch these closed. Isn't that kind of cool that they did that? But here's my pillow in there, right? This video is getting way too long, but you get the idea. But here's my pillow in there. So this is, I'd say about, we're going to measure. We're actually going to measure. Hold on. Pull up my measuring tape. And let me lock this in. So my pillow was, give or take, around 13. Right? When it's all said and done, angles of the camera and all this stuff. 13 by 13 square. So a 13 by 13 inch pillow square is what actually fit into the saddlebags. If that makes any sense. So there you go. Anyways, if you do like what you're seeing... Let me give you another shot with them when they're like compressed down. Fold this back over. So remember, this part comes down. It goes my tape measure. I really got to find like a third hand somewhere. Anyways, this folds back down and this folds back down. You get the idea. This goes back over. Boom, you're set. Mirrored on the same side. This buckles to this. Oh, maybe now I might have a chance to... There you go. So here's the click. See that click? Okay, there you go. Or here that click. 
there you go. So it's, you know, you're getting a decent size ABS, your ABS plastic on the buckles. There's your actual buckle connection right there, right? Which is kind of odd. You get double stitching here, you get single stitching here, you get double stitching here, then single and single. Let's look at that if you want to see. There's the back side of water, <laughs> the back side of the buckle. There you go. There's the back side of the buckle if you want to see that. There's that part. There's that part. Anyways, you get the idea. <laughs> for me and my needs and being a budget person, right? Highest quality for the lowest price, you know, decent quality for an even lower price. To me, these are going to work, right? As cargo bags for quick bike packing trips, you know, trips where like you want to go, like here in Southern California, we have like, like state beaches where you can camp at this. I think the rates went up. It was like 13 bucks or something. November, 2023, I think it's like 13 bucks now per night to camp at the beach. I think you can stay up to like two nights in a row for stuff to seven nights. I can't remember what the rules are. Anyways, somebody down below will comment, I'm sure. Anyways, if you like what you're seeing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Links to this will be down there in the description section down there below. These are what I'm calling budget cargo bags down in the description. So go ahead and check that out and I will catch you all in the next exciting video.